One of the issues with traditional joinery is not just getting one tenon in place, but getting a second tenon on the end of the bar two dimension. And so this is my little model as to what I do. It's not my original idea, but I really like, enjoy the way it works. Just to give you a bit of layout of the land, this is the top of my vise. I don't know if you can see this. This is a piece of angle iron. This piece of angle iron is my anvil and this is my gauge. This is a variable, this is fixed. And you'll notice that the anvil is, sits on top of the vise, whereas this can float out in space. There's no duress on this piece. When I look at the gauge, this gauge has got a chamfer and that chamfer is the same size and shape as the root of my tenon. Remember when we look at a monkey tool, a monkey tool has a chamfer to the inside which gives a chamfer to the inside of the root of the tenon so there's no stress riser. I need this shoulder to sit up against this angle iron without interference so you've got to relieve that edge. You'll also note that this particular piece is held in place by a vice grip. I do have some bolt holes if I have to do something that needs to be a bit more permanent. Uh, but this is the variable. This one moves, the other one is fixed, the other end is fixed. On this end, I've got a chamfer, but that chamfer is basically the same as the jaws of my uh, butcher. So because this is wider than the apex of my butcher, there's a relief on this back side and then I've got my crown is going to be the same as this. So when I use this to mark my tenon, it will fit in my butcher dies. So here's how it works. Um, with this end hot, the, when you need the new tenon, you're going to come on and you will have previously measured the distance that you need plus about a 30 second. Why the plus a 30 second? Because this end is hot and therefore expanded, so you want to take an account for that. It's okay to upset, it's a little hard to draw out without putting some dings into your bar. So I do dimension that I need, plus a 30 second. Bar goes on, this end is hot, I'm going to come with my hand hammer and I just give that a bang, turn it over 180, so I've got a, a mark in here now, turn it over, bang, so I've got a mark on either side of the bar and that now will go into my butcher dies on my blacksmith's helper or whatever guillotine and I'll be able to draw my, um, isolate the material for the tenant. Having a look at the two differences again, you'll notice that the anvil side has got the tab sawn down so I can hit this with my hand hammer and not get interference. This one is not, it's just left up so it will capture one shoulder or another of the tenon and hold it in place. Another thing that might not be obvious is that this is cut further into the bar. This is shallower. So I've got about a sixteenth or so of material there on the shoulder. So this is about a sixteenth proud. This is that minus a sixteenth and that way this is going to be kept parallel to the edge of the bar and this therefore is going to be perpendicular to the anvil. 